Greetings, Global Kingdom family, and welcome to Bahamas Faith Ministries YouTube channel, where we transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change through the message of the kingdom, the message that Jesus preached. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so that you can be notified when we are live or when new content is posted. We're excited to provide you with the information, inspiration, and revelation that produces transformation. Now let's jump into today's message. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and good evening to you. We are excited about another opportunity to share with you our BFMI family, our IACOM family. We are so grateful for God allowing us to see another year. 2024 is here, and uh, we are a part of it by the grace and mercy of God. And so that by itself uh, deserves a hand and just a big appreciation to God uh, for allowing us to be here. Uh, what a pleasure it is to be a part of this time of consecration and fasting. It is very needed. It is very necessary. It is a time for us to pull aside. It's a time for us to refocus, to gain insight, to gain understanding, to gain uh, a sense of urgency uh, for what God wants to do in our contemporary society uh, here in 2024 and beyond. We'd like to say a big God bless you to Pastor Dave and Angela Burroughs. Thank you for the great work that you're doing uh, to uh, Pastor Kirsch and uh, Pastor Suzette Darville. Uh, we would like to say a big God bless you to you also, Pastor Pat, Pastor Sheena, all of Pastor Knowles, all of the pastors that are at BFMI. Thank you for the great work that you are doing. You're definitely leading a great charge, and we are definitely praying for you and with you. Uh, tonight, I have the distinct uh, pleasure and privilege to share from a topic called The Power of the Holy Spirit in Your Personal Life. The Power of the Holy Spirit in Your Personal Life. By now, you would have already heard the scriptural text that I will be using as a backdrop. Uh, and will synergistically um, weave the two together. The power of the Holy Spirit in your personal life. The redemptive work of Christ is governed by the Holy Spirit, who assists us in walking in our redemption, our repentance, in renewal, in restoration, in resurrection, and reconciliation, in regeneration, in remission, and restitution. The Holy Spirit is the governing influence of the kingdom of God on the planet. So in order for us to understand the kingdom, we have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the revealer of mysteries. He is the revealer of mysteries in the kingdom, and he's also the revealer of mysteries in our earth. Do you know that our earth itself is groaning and travailing and says the Bible says that it's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The sons of God are the heirs of God. And as an heir of God, we have access to family business and family information. And what is that family information? It is the revelation of the kingdom of God. But also, I believe it is the revelation of of uh, mysteries that are in our world. The late great Dr. Miles Monroe, the late great Dr. Richard Pinder, I believe God made them stewards over mysteries in humanity, where God allowed them to be able to, to teach on topics that were mysteries to most of Christendom. But when God gave them the revelation, those mysteries then became uh, masteries. They mastered mysteries. And I believe that that's one of the roles of the Holy Spirit in the church and, and really in the contemporary time that we are living right now is that the Holy Spirit wants to uh, allow us to be custodians of mastery over mysteries. I'm telling you, I believe from the next six years all the way up into 2030, I believe that we're going to see more and more 
kingdom citizens being raised up in their communities to become, to uh, uh, exemplify and demonstrate mastery over mysteries. Isn't it a mystery that we can have situations in our communities for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years and there are no solutions for it? Isn't it a mystery that we put programs in place and we still can't solve problems? Isn't it a mystery that we have new governments that go out and new governments that come in and we have millions of dollars that go into communities and million dollars, mil millions of dollars that are spent on a yearly basis and we still have some of the problems that are ailing our communities all around the world? Isn't it a mystery that we seem to have uh, what needs to be done, but we cannot connect the dots so that it can make the change and the lasting transformation in our communities that's needed. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. But I believe that for every mystery, God has somebody he's going to raise up with mastery. And I believe the Holy Spirit of God is the revealer of mastery over mysteries. So I want you to welcome and embrace the Holy Spirit in your personal walk because God is going to raise you up. Yes, you, you, you. God's going to raise you up to be a master over some of the mysteries. That's really what it is to walk in dominion. It's impossible to walk in dominion if you are not a master over a mystery right if you're not a master if you if you have not mastered something then you have not effectively walked in dominion i believe one of the works of the holy spirit is to help us with mastery so i believe this in this year we're going to see god bless his people to walk in a level of mastery the second thing, the second point I want you to write down is the Holy Spirit gives us supernatural understanding of the times that we are living in. Many times we come up with answers, but it's to the wrong question. Let me say it again. Many people in our society come up with answers, but it's to the wrong question. That means that we come up with programs and we come up with solutions that are disconnected from the real problem. But only the Holy Spirit can give us the supernatural understanding of the times that we are living in. Number three, the Holy Spirit demonstrates the power that is in us. He demonstrates the power that is through us. And he demonstrates the power that is with us. When we see the power of God working in us, that's called transformation. When we see the power of God working with us, or sorry, through us, that's demonstration. When we see the power of God working with us, that's when we are expanding the kingdom and building our society. So the Holy Spirit has a unique role that cannot be duplicated in our world, in our society, even within religion, the Holy Spirit cannot be duplicated. He can be imitated, but he can never be duplicated. Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse number 22 to 23, says it like this. As we segue from the Holy Spirit into our scriptural text for the evening, Galatians 5, verse 22 through 23 says this, and I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting. Very powerful. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. He says, against such things, there is no law. Now, as we look at the scriptural text uh, that was already read earlier, uh, th there, is n there is no substitute for uh, what the church is called to do. And so tonight, we're just focusing on really a few principles um, that is uh, not exhaustive, um, but there are a few principles that sheds light on 
uh, this topic that I was given tonight. Uh, in all that we do and all that we teach, we cannot afford to lose compassion for the lost. We cannot afford to lose concern for the found. Because one of our distinctions in the earth, as according to John 13, 35, is this. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. So I believe every year we're not called to come up with resolutions, but we're called to come up with solutions. And I believe that that's what the Holy Spirit wants to work with the ecclesia to do not to help people with resolutions. Resolution for 22, resolution for 23, resolution. No, I don't believe we're called to come up with resolutions. I believe we are called to come up with solutions. And so uh, in 2024, I believe that our capacity for solutions uh, is gonna be seen. Our capacity for solutions are gonna be seen in our local churches, uh, in our churches internationally, in our churches around the world. And I think it really takes the Holy Spirit for us to identify what solutions are necessary and needed in the sphere and region that we are in. Now, I can speak about our personal uh, sphere that we are in. We are not too far from um, what's called a food desert. And so um, when I heard that as a leader of our congregation, as a leader in the body of Christ, as a leader in our region, um, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me and to us that you are equipped to do something about that problem. You are equipped to do something about that need. And so here's what we did. We decided to put a program in place um, which is a feeding program. Last year, um, we we served over 10,000 pounds of food um, in our community, uh, again, because we are very close to a food desert. And so we are meeting a legitimate need. We are putting food on the table. We're helping to support families. We're helping to sustain families. And that's what a solution looks like in our area based on what God has asked us to do. But I believe the Holy Spirit in your life gives you an opportunity for you to identify what does a solution look like for you in 2024? What has he called you? What type of solution has he called you to be and to bring in society personally what kind of solution can you bring to your church you know it's almost like uh, communities um, uh, love to say you know if you have a problem take it to the church but very few people say if you have a solution take it to the church listen let me tell you when you are a part of the body of Christ you don't just need to bring problems to the church you need to bring solutions to the church because solutions are the things that help to change the lives of other people and in turn helps to change your life also. So in 2024, I want to challenge you to have an attitude as, as a person that you are intentionally looking to be solution oriented. Don't worry about resolutions. Resolutions will take care of themselves. In 2024, I want to challenge you, just like I've challenged our church and challenged different churches where I've ministered, to be solution-oriented. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you, God, in my life, what kind of solution can I be in the sphere that I'm living? What kind of solution can I be in the uh, place where I'm serving? What kind of solution can I be? Hey, it might be that you cook an extra pot of chicken sauce every month and there's a family that needs it or, or bake a nice pan of potato bread. I guess y'all could tell I love Bahamian food. I'm a Bahamian and, and that's just that, 
right? But whatever it is God is saying to you to be solution oriented, that is what God is asking you to do. And rather than this year look at your resolutions, I I challenge you to look at your solutions. That's the challenge I have for you is not to have a list of your resolutions. I want you to write a different list this year. The list that I want you to write are a list of solutions. And here's what the solutions say. I'm going to be a solution in this area. I'm going to be a solution in that area. I'm going to be a solution in this area. Yes, I can do something about that. I saw that happening last year, and I wondered if somebody was able or equipped to handle that. I'm going to volunteer in that area because I can be a solution. I believe that is a part of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, sadly, when you become solution-oriented, Um, you can get discouraged. And here's why you can get discouraged, because you can say, I can just speak for us. Well, we feed, we fed hundreds of people and and we gave out thousands of pounds of food. And um, here's what we found, that more people came for the food, natural food, than actually comes for the principles, spiritual food. Well, listen, you are meeting a need and you are bridging a gap, and you are being a solution. That's what you are called to do and call to be. And you have to trust God that as you sow, God will make sure that you reap. You have to trust God that as you give, that God will make sure that it's given back unto you. You have to trust God that from a pure heart, from a pure mind, from a pure conscience, that as you seek to be a solution, as you represent Him, as you represent the Holy Spirit, as you represent Christ and our Father and His kingdom, that He will make sure that that which you have done and that which you have given will be given back unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Well, why do I say that? Because I want you to look at all of the previous years where you had a list of resolutions, right? And some of those resolutions came to pass, but by the end of the year, you can look at that list and you can say, you know what? There are a whole lot of things on this list that did not get accomplished. And let me tell you something resolutions are really inward focused resolutions are really inward focused it's what can happen for me what can i do for me who can help me but i want you to change this time i want you to be solution focused and this is going to be not inward but outward who can i assist who can i bless who can i change Whose life can I improve? How can I improve the area that I am living in? Somebody say amen to that right there. There's a scripture in 1 John 3, 17. And here's what it says. It says, but whoever, it says, but whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, How does the love of God abide in him? That word shuts up can be translated like slamming a jail door securely. When it says shuts up his heart, that's what it really means. It means as if to slam a jail door securely. Now, here's the unique thing about about benevolence uh, in the body of Christ. Um, Jesus fed hungry people, but guess what? They got hungry again. Jesus healed people, but guess what? They still needed him again because those people are no longer on the planet. We feed people, but guess what? Yes, they still get hungry again. You help people, and guess what? They need your help again right? They need your help again. But you must say, well, why, why, why should we keep doing this when we know that um, you may not see the type of change in their life that you are hoping to see 
on the other end of your assistance or on the other end of your help. Why? Because we're representing Christ. Now, let me ask you this. How many times have God helped you when um, you know he really didn't have to? How many times did God assist you? How many times did God come through for you? So when we're talking about compassion, we're not talking about people earning our compassion. We're talking about, about us representing the king. And in us representing the king, we're not doing it for a gold star. We hope that it materializes in that the person is able to also get the principles to transform their life, to change their life. But we're doing it because we're representing the king. And we have to ask ourselves, do we serve a benevolent king? And the answer is yes. We serve a benevolent king, so we have to be benevolent citizens. You know, 1 John 3, 20 through 21 says this, For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. It says in verse 21, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. So what is that saying? I'm going to wrap this up as we get ready uh, to end this with a word of prayer. This is basically saying, as I tie it all together, this is basically saying this, the personal relationship with the Holy Spirit in our life will let us know where we need to be the solution and how we need to show compassion. And he says, He's going to work with your heart because the reality is you don't have all the answers and you don't have unlimited resources. I don't have all the answers and I don't have unlimited resources. And so this is why we can't take our cues from the world because the world may criticize the church because of what they don't do, but they ignore what the church does do. And they don't realize that no church can do everything, but Together, we can all represent the king. We are feeding thousands and thousands of pounds of people, but we're not taking anybody to the hospital. That may be the assignment of another church. We're not providing uh, a bus ministry. Um, as a matter of fact, we sold our bus. It was more advantageous for us to sell our bus because of the community that we are in. Uh, many people don't need a bus ride to church like some other communities in rural communities where a bus ministry is what's needed. It's all about what God is saying to your heart as a church. What is God saying to your heart as a church? I'm going to read the scripture again. It says, for if our heart condemns us, that means if you walk past a situation and you know this is what God is saying to our church, this is we are supposed to be the solution for this. If your heart is condemning you, if there's, a, if there's a situation, if there are circumstances, if there are needs that are popping up and you say, okay, okay, I hear you, Lord. This is where you are asking us to show compassion. This is where you are asking us to show compassion. In your personal life, it can be coming up over and over and over and over again. And you can say to the Lord or the Lord can say to you and you realize, okay, Lord, this is where you're asking me to show compassion. On my watch, this is what you're asking me to do. And he says, if your heart condemns you, he says, God is greater than your heart. He's saying, if it's hurting your heart to see it, it's breaking God's heart also. So how does a church know what they should do because you have limited resources? How does a person know what they can do because you have limited resources? What is God saying to your heart? He says, because if it's breaking your heart, it's also breaking his heart. Let me read the scripture again. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Verse 21 says this, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. 
This is why Jesus could have confidence towards God because Jesus could walk through towns where there were many, many, many needs, but he went and addressed the needs that he was assigned to address in that particular day. He went and addressed the needs that he was assigned to address at that particular time because that was his assignment for that particular time. So if it's breaking your heart, it's breaking God's heart. And God is saying, you can't keep walking around knowing that God wants you to do something about what you're seeing. So how do you know what you're seeing? What are you complaining about? What are you frustrated about? What are you asking for a change about? Whatever it is you're asking for a change, whatever it is that you want to see, whatever choices or changes you want to see in your community, I believe God has called you to be the solution. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share the word of God with you this evening. Um, we are looking forward to all of the other speakers and all of the other sessions. We're enjoying um, having an opportunity to participate in this consecration. A wonderful time as we set aside time um, to seek the face of God. We believe 2024 is going to be a year of solutions, a year of solutions. Um, thank God for the theme again uh, that we have, uh, the year of kingdom influence. We believe that through our solutions, we are going to see uh, the church being known and seen as solutions and influencers in the earth. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day and evening. Bye-bye. We pray that the message today has blessed and encouraged you to go out and live a transformed life. If you were impacted by today's message, don't keep it to yourself. Share this video with your friends and family. To see our full programming listing and service times, or to find out how you can be a part of what God's doing here at Bahamas Faith Ministries, visit our website today at bahamasfaithministries.org. Together, we can continue to transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change.